Hi guys, how are you there? I hope all of you are having a wonderful time at home. And welcome back to EP Science Virtual Class. And this is Jandrox Educator TV, your host for today. For today's video, you are going to learn about the understanding of cells and the general structures between plant and animal cells. Alright? But before that, let me ask you, how does a cell form? What is a human cell made of? How does a human cell work? Do human have cells? Yes or no? How cells look like? Do you have any idea? That's the question that we need to find out. By understanding cells, all living organisms are made up of one or more cells. Remember, cells are the most basic unit of organisms which can function on their own cells that carry out life processes such as respiration, division, excretion, and growth. Cells are the building blocks of an organism. They work together to keep an organism alive. Cells of living things exist in many sizes, in many forms and shapes. They can be round, oval, long, short, with tail, and so on. That depends on different identification of animal or plant cells and any other living organisms or microorganisms. Here's the question. Can we see cells with our naked eye? Which cells can be visible to human? You might wonder why I have here a microscope. It is because this is one of the most essential for experimentation and research when we are going to investigate about the structure of a very tiny cell or particles of a microorganisms and the structure of plant cells and animal cells. Let us remember that not all cells can be seen with our naked eye. We need basic equipment like microscope to help us examine and check the structure of those plant cells or animal cells for example and any other microorganisms take note guys cells are very tiny and cannot be seen with our naked eye cells of living organisms can be observed using microscope Due to some issues or problems when it comes to experimentations about the different structure of the plant, human, or animal cells, microscope was invented. This equipment helps us to view the exact structure into a power magnification of lenses, which cannot be seen with our naked eye. By understanding and identifying different structures of plant, animal, and other microorganism cells, it has been made because of the microscope. Even at school, at the hospital, pharmaceutical laboratories that involves studying different types of cells. Do you know who was that first scientist who used to discover about cell? Alright, so his name was Robert Hooke. What was his discovery? What was his contributions when it comes to understanding about cells? Robert Hooke is a British scientist. He was the first person to study about cells. In what way? He used to figure out by using cork cells that used to observe through 
a microscope by Robert Hooke. Now let us move to the general structure of a cell. A typical cell is made up of cell membrane which contains a living substance called protoplasm. Protoplasm consists of nucleus and cytoplasm. The nucleus is spherical in shape and covered by nucleus membrane. Cytoplasm is a colorless jelly-like material surrounded by cell membrane. The cell membrane is a thin film which is partially permeable to the surrounding substances. While the mitochondrion is a structure in the cytoplasm that produces energy for the cell. All right, this time I am going to explain and identify the important structure of animal cells. Generally, each animal cell is made up of cell membrane and protoplasm which consists of cytoplasm and nucleus animal cells do not have cell wall remember animal cells do not have cell wall or chloroplast that's only for plant in the cytoplasm there are mitochondria Look at the structure of the animal cell in this illustration. What about the general structure of plant cells? How are we going to explain or identify the structure of the plant cells? What are those parts which is present in this cell which is not present to animal cells? Alright, let's continue. The basic structure of plant cells is similar to the animal cells having a cell membrane, cytoplasm, mitochondria, and a nucleus. All plant cells have a cell wall, but animals don't have. Cell wall gives them almost fixed shape. In a plant cells often have one large vacuole, whereas animal cells usually have many small ones. Most plant cells contain chloroplasts, which are green in color, but it's not present in animals. Chloroplasts just only in plants. Now look at the function of cell structures. First, we have cell membrane. It is present in all cells. What is the main function? It encloses the cytoplasm, controls the movement of materials in and out of cells. What about cell wall? It's another structure. It is present in all plant cells only. Right? The function of a cell wall, it supports and gives shape to the cells. Structure number three, cytoplasm. It is present in all cells. What is the function of a cytoplasm? This is where chemical reactions take place inside a cell stores dissolved material next structure we have nucleus it is present in almost all cells it could be matured red blood cells do not have nuclei the function of a nucleus it used to control all cellular activities another cell structure is what we call chloroplast that contains green pigments coiled in chlorophyll. These are present in most plant cells that are under the light. The function of the chloroplast, it is used to absorb light by chlorophyll for photosynthesis to produce food and oxygen. 
Next structure, we have vacuole. It is present in most plant cells and some animal cells. The function of vacuole is to hold useful substances, water, and waste product. And it also supports the plant when it is full of water. Okay? Last structure of the cell is what we call mitochondrion. It is present in all cells. The function of mitochondrion is to produce energy from digested food for the cell. Alright? So those are the entire functions of different cell structure. Now, let's move to a different comparison between animal cells and plant cells. Look at the chart that shows the similarities and differences between animal cells and plant cells. What are the similarities of animal cells and plant cells? Here are the similarities. Animal and plant cells have cell membrane, nucleus, cytoplasm, and mitochondria. Both animal and plant cells will be able to carry out activities of life. Here are the common differences between animal cells and plant cells. What about the sizes? In animal cells, they are generally smaller, while in plant cells, they are generally bigger in sizes. What about the shape? In animal cells, they are usually irregular and may vary during life. In plant cells, the shape is fixed by the cell wall. What about the contents? In animal cells, no cell wall, no chloroplast, with small or no vacuoles. In plant cells, have a cell wall. Many plant cells under the light have chloroplast, often have a large vacuole. What about the position of the nucleus? In animal cells, they are usually at the center of the cells. In a plant cells, may be the one side of the cell. What about the food storage? In animal cells, there is what we call a glycogen granules, while in plant cells, there is starch granules. So those are the common difference between animals and plant cells. Finally, we will talk about the different types and functions of different cells. Humans and animals and plants have many different types of cells. Remember, these cells have different shapes and structures to carry out different functions. They are known as specialized cells. Alright, so remember that is present in humans, animals, and plants. Here are some specialized cells in humans with their unique features and functions. Number one, nerve cells. How are we going to identify or describe nerve cells? Nerve cells have long, thin fibers. It used to carry information in the form of nerve impulses to different parts of our body. So, in what particular system of our body? It is found in the nervous system. Next, specialized cells is what we call red blood cells. How are we going to identify its own function and even their structure? In what particular body system that red blood cells found? Okay, so this is part of human 
or animal circulatory system. Red blood cells have the nucleus, have biconcave disc shapes, contain hemoglobin, red pigment, which carry oxygen. It is used to transport oxygen from the lungs to all parts of the body. And it is used to transport carbon dioxide from all parts of the body going to the lungs. So this is basically the function of the red blood cells. Now, let's move to another one, muscle cells. What is the main function of the muscle cells? So our muscles, okay, in a muscular system, basically it is used to contract and relax to produce movement and action. The function of the reproductive cells in our reproductive system, sperm was being produced by male reproductive cells. It has a long tail that allow them to swim to the ova or ovum of a female reproductive cells during fertilization process. And remember that reproductive cells carry genetic materials for the entire parts of the reproductive system. Now, let us move to some specialized cells in plants with their unique features and functions. First one, we have epithelial cells. What are those functions? Epithelial cells is flat and have a large vacuole. It is transparent to allow light to enter. Another specialized plant cells is what we call palisade cells. It contains lots of chlorophyll to carry out photosynthesis. Next one is what we call guard cells. The function of this is it has a shape like kidneys that helps to regulate gas exchange by controlling the opening and closing of the stomach that has a small pore between the two guard cells all right so it is usually present in plant leaf or green plants last one is what we call root hair cells it has a long thin extension that used to absorb water and minerals from the soil all right so what are those specialized plant cells these are epithelial cell palisade cells guard cells and the root hair cells all right so this is the end of our topic for today about understanding the different structure between plant and animal cells including the different specialized cells, both plants and animals. I hope you learned something from this about your basic knowledge in understanding different cells. And don't forget to answer your quizzes and assignment in the Google Classroom at the EP website. Thank you so much. Stay home, stay safe. Enjoy learning. See you all around, guys.